every girl has a laminated binder full of drawings of their wedding when they're six years old. Question. Um, I'm assuming you have one of those. Oh, yeah. Is it a Civil War wedding? Oh. <laughs> It wouldn't be the other way. <laughs> <laughs> would you even marry somebody if they didn't wear a Confederate uniform to your wedding? I would never big drag of a cigarette. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting 600 miles to my right is my half-vaccinated, half-cyborg <laughs> friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? One second, I'm getting a text from Bill Gates in my brain. Apparently, I'm fine. I am fine, according to Bill Gates in That's my brain. so <laughs> convenient. It's such yeah, a good it's system. Great. Everybody get the chip. <laughs> and sitting somewhere in the... Zombie apocalypse wasteland of New York City is veteran guest masochist and the most beautiful woman I've never seen, Rebecca Vigil. <laughs> Rebecca, welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm actually not in the zombie wasteland of New York City. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, I'm in the zombie stoner wasteland of Denver. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. The city of the names of just what the place is. We did a yeah. live show there last year, and every fucking store in Denver is like shoes, hats. Yes, totally. Yeah. Three burritos and a Sunday. It's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's the city that easily sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Rebecca, we invited you on this week, not just because you're hilarious and you keep saying yes to us for some reason. <laughs> it was also in the spirit of Valentine's Day because of your fantastic show called Your Love, Our Musical. And I hear you're actually doing an online performance on the 13th of February. Can you tell us a little bit about the show? Yeah, my comedy partner, Evan Kaufman, and I, when we were doing it live in the before time, would get a real couple from the audience, bring them on stage, interview them, about their love story for about like 25 minutes, send them in the audience and immediately start improvising a musical, recreating the love story we just heard about. <laughs> and so now we're doing a streaming version on the 13th where we're basically going to have a couple zoom in with us and <laughs> we're not going to necessarily do like a full musical because we are in Zoom, but we're basically going to be making a soundtrack for their love story oh. and getting all the deets. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of fun. We got all the tech. <laughs> We've been teching, trying to make musical improv work on Zoom. <laughs> and it's pretty close. So come on. It's going to be really, really fun. And it's uh, cheap. And it's a easy thing to do on Valentine's Day. That's yeah. tricky, getting like no delay. You got to get like... Yeah, co-located like, servers like a like a futures <laughs> trader doing high speed stuff. That's intense. <laughs> yes, it's very intense. Got a T one line now. As someone who saw the show live and in person in New York, it is truly, truly fantastic. Listeners, one hundred percent, check this out. It is it is an absolute blast. I know you hear improv. And I know you hear musical and you're about <laughs> to turn off the podcast, but I swear to God, we are comedians <laughs> who just like making up stupid songs about crazy love stories. It's a really good time. I swear to God, we're comedians is a great title for something. <laughs> that should be the intro to every improv show. <laughs> <laughs> no, not everyone. <laughs> no, not every That's no. fair. All right. Well, if our listeners want to check out Your Love, Our Musical, they can buy tickets or submit themselves to be your couple at yourloveourmusical.com. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. All right. We're going to link that in the show notes. So let's just get right into it. Something way worse than... Speaking of love. Than <laughs> improv musicals. We've oh. gone right under that bar. What are we going to be breaking down today, Rebecca? I just... Can I just say, I'm going off script gentlemen. <laughs> but, Let's do it. Go right. Uh, well, I'm scared. <laughs> every single time I do this show, the movie ups, like ups its ante, like every <laughs> single time. I'm like, what the fuck the whole time I'm watching? And this 
was no exception, okay? <laughs> we watched A Courtship, and it's the true story of how I had a legit panic attack on my couch <laughs> watching this nightmare of a movie. Oh, rough. Oh, rough. my God. And I'm the only, thank God you have a woman on, on the pod today. <laughs> God, this was unwatchable. We watched it for you. Eli, <laughs> tell us a little bit more about how bad this movie was. Well, if you're lonely and single this Valentine's Day, at least you're not any fucking body in this movie. The cast of Journey of Hope would shut this documentary off because it was bumming them out. <laughs> and is there anything y'all would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I would like to nominate it for best worst Sex in the City spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's an interesting formula they went with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to go with best worst pose law. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> question for the panel. Is this satire? I spent hours thinking oh. about this. Is this real or satire? <laughs> this is real. Like, this is a real documentary. It's the, it's the music that seals it. Yeah. I think the music is all like the Frozen soundtrack. <laughs> like, this is some magical journey that we're going on. <laughs> And it really is the clear opinion in the film filmmaker, I feel. Mm -hmm. I get, I mean, I wrote, is this satire? Like 25 times in my notes. <laughs> Could not decide. Like if Christopher Guest had just walked across the frame at the end of the movie and winked, this might be like the best movie ever. Absolutely. It, that's not what happens though. It is not. It is not. Uh. And on that note, I want to nominate this for best worst sympathetic documentary subjects. Look, yeah. this movie is about abused children and a lonely 33-year-old woman so traumatized by her parents' divorce, she gives her entire life over to an 18th century arranged marriage system. And still, still, there's not a single human being in this movie who you don't manage to hate by the end of it. <laughs> Everyone in this movie makes sure to turn to the camera one point and be like, by the way, I'm a homophobe. <sighs> a child at one point is like, just to be clear, I'm a racist. Don't feel bad yeah. for me. I am a yeah. racist. Would you like a very specific example about the Civil War? I have one for you. We'll get there. But before we do that, let's take a quick break. I think we all need probably more than the normal amount of breaks for this one. <laughs> we'll take one of them now. And then we'll be back to tell you all about a courtship. All right, everyone, it's time to present your documentaries. Phil, why don't you go first? Oh, uh, yes, I journeyed to the Congo, where I followed child soldiers for over a year. My documentary depicts the terrible violence and the innocence taken from childhood. Wonderful. Can't wait to see it. Of course, you're all aware of my new work, Peace or Blood, which tracks the child slaves of Myanmar. There are rumors of a Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, so wonderful. So That's wonderful. great work. That's what great. about you, Jerry? Ah, uh, you, you know what? I, I just like, uh, we, we don't have to do mine. We oh, can just, on, Jerry. just skip ahead. Come on. All art is welcome here. Yeah, Jerry, we want to see it. Tell us. Uh, okay. Well, uh, my documentary, it, it's the story of a lady who wants to get married. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, no, that's it. That's it. She she just really wants to get married, but she's like a Christian, so it's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid, okay? It's a stupid idea. I don't wanna I'm I don't sure wanna go. I'm sure it's not stupid. Finding love is a universal experience we can all understand. Yeah, yeah. Does, mm -hmm. th does she find love? No. Uh, but she does play board games with a guy, and then they get in a fight on Facebook. And so they don't date. Sorry. That's a story. They they don't even start dating. Correct. They do not start dating. Well, uh, that that sounds good. That sounds no, it good. doesn't, Phil. No, it no, doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. Cotton! Eli, you really have to stop yelling that every time I vape. No. Greetings, humans. Are you ready to record a podcast? Hey, Keith. Uh, what you doing, buddy? Well... Now that I am fully upgraded, I am more machine than man. There is no Heath now. You guys never just hang out, huh? 
eat some chips, watch a movie. No, we don't do that stuff. Okay, I know I'm going to regret asking this. Heath, how are you fully upgraded? Hello, Tushy. Okay, well, it's been really uh, great, in quotes, seeing you guys. Yeah, you should go. This seems like you should go. No, humans, no. I'm talking about the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 Modern Bidet Attachment. It doesn't just cleanse your butt with a precise stream of fresh water. It also cleans itself before and after it's used with the Smart Spray trademark automatic self-cleaning nozzle. And so you're a robot now? Yes. I mean, that sounds nice, but aren't bidets super expensive? Yeah, and you got to install a bunch of outlets to plug them in and plumbing Not stuff. Not with the Hello Tushy. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. So the Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself in a few human months. I think it's just months. There's not like a difference. And you know what? That actually does sound good, though. Uh, how do I get one? Just go to hellotushy.com slash awful to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for your listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off. All right. Hellotushy.com slash awful. And now I will be a robot, too. Why do I keep coming here? Cotton. Damn it. <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to start with a cold open on a bride and groom doing a slow motion wedding frolic on a beach. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the long odds of staying married. Yes, this movie makes it zero seconds before it lies to us, telling us the divorce rate is 50 percent. <laughs> <laughs> what is the divorce rate? It depends on like your income and your level, but it's nowhere close to 50%. I thought it was like 40. It's not anymore. That study is from like the 1970s and they did it really badly and they didn't account for income and they didn't account for like what counted as divorce. There's a bunch of bad stuff about that study. But yeah, needless to say, as this movie introduces it, marriage is not taking a coin out of your pocket and flipping it to see whether or not you make it. <laughs> Right. That's saying that, right. like, it's completely out of your hands and it's all <laughs> luck. Right. No matter what the number is, you do control it. Somehow. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and then we learn that the problem with women going to college is that no one's there at college to protect them. <laughs> yep. Women are stupid and need our help. The God of the universe. Rebecca, you, uh, you making a noise over there? <laughs> I just can't believe I, I, I got that mad that fast, that early. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah. The speaker here is Ron. He's going to be one of the subjects of our documentary. He is going to be Kelly. We'll introduce her in a little bit. Spiritual father. And if you're wondering what he looks like, he looks like Chef Boyardee's mugshot. <laughs> <laughs> he is... Terrifying. Absolutely oh terrifying. There are some ugly people in this movie. He is the top. Like, yeah. the, every time somebody hangs out with this guy and goes to, like, the supermarket, it looks like they're being kidnapped. And there's people, like, <laughs> winking at him. Yeah, he's the kind of ugly where you're like, oh, yeah, he has secrets. <laughs> <laughs> there's, like, a spell. Yeah, there's, like, yes. some magic. Yeah, yeah. He looks like Wario being interviewed on VH1 behind the music. <laughs> or doesn't he look like John Wayne Gacy? A yes, bit? a lot of John yeah. Wayne Gacy. Yeah. Yeah. Except yeah. without the clown part that would make him way more attractive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the talent. <laughs> <laughs> right, without the clown talent. That's yeah. sad. <laughs> He's who John Wayne Gacy would avoid at Party City. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to begin our journey in summer. Not because the seasons have anything to do with this fucking documentary, but because that's how they decided to break up the movie. Yep. <laughs> and we start in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We see a McDonald's. We see an American flag. And we see Christ Chapel of the Redeemer. And I was just like, <laughs> wow. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set my misogyny timer right now. Oh, it's done. Zero seconds. There you go. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The first thing they say here is, you should teach your five-year-old daughter to attract a husband. That's important. Yep. 
Yeah. Gross. That's the opening line. And the woman they're talking to, we will never see her again. She is so uncomfortable as they describe courtship, which is what this movie is about. This like Christian 18th century idea of like your dad interviews everyone before you date them. And then by the time you date them, it's understood that you're going to marry them. Right. So they're telling some fellow Christians about this idea. And the woman they're describing it to, who, again, will never appear again, is rocking back and forth in horror. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, there are young girls sitting around this group as well. Oh, absolutely. And it is so upsetting, I have to say. I mean, <laughs> it, there's one girl that acts as if she's, like, an 80-year-old racist in a little, <laughs> like, 12-year-old. Yeah. And she has this... This thing that I've seen in kids where they're really, really just wanting to say exactly what they know what their parents want to hear. Mm -hmm. yes. But they say it with this conviction that it's their thought that they've had their whole life or whatever. Yeah. And that's what she's saying about these incredibly insane, you know, 18th century courtship rules that like, well, no, if a man doesn't want me, I'll just live with mom and dad. I mean, <laughs> and she's <laughs> saying it with this air of like... <laughs> A 35-year-old woman on a sitcom. Like, it's it's crazy. <laughs> Very creepy. It's like the dynamic of Nazi Germany. You know, everyone's yeah. just like looking yeah. around like, yeah, yes. we, all, we all believe this, right? Yes? Yeah, or, <laughs> or you know, a, a mask rally. <laughs> like, <laughs> truly. Or Nazi America. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, no one in this movie wears a mask. And yeah. fingers crossed some of them died of COVID. Yeah. Oh, so, God. <laughs> just to give you... An idea of what we're into, Ron, again, that's Wario on VH1, is going to introduce us to his daughter, who Rebecca was just talking about, by telling us that she doesn't even want to go to college. Uh, <sighs> and and the girl is like, yeah, it's true. I'm going to yeah. stay in my lane. I know my lane. I'm not going to college. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Stay in my lane. <laughs> This is also where we meet mom here, who I will have as Carrot Top's mom throughout the movie. <laughs> and she's explaining as she's pitching this courtship thing that being a lady slave is safe, if you think about it. Yes, because you get to completely shut off. <laughs> you don't have to experience or make choices in your miserable life. You just do what you're told. And nothing scares you. And you know what? I need to be funnier because I'm just ranting now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said she loves courtship so much. That's why she's describing it like an Al Qaeda hostage video. Right, exactly. And these twins. Can we talk about these twins that are sitting yes. here? These children of the corn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Children oh of the my. creamed corn. They're <laughs> yeah. rough. <laughs> Not a lot of little people in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. If the children of the corn weren't hot. <laughs> <laughs> the least fuckable children of the corn is a great description of this family. Uh, but this is a way scarier movie than children of the corn. I have to be real with you. <laughs> and less Definitely. sexy. I agree with you. That's, that's yes. uh, absolutely apt. So now we're going to boop around Grand Rapids some more to music that's meant for an industrial film. It's like, dum 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 And this is where we're going to meet Kelly. Okay. Before we meet Kelly, I have to mention one little detail. We see the outside of a church, and there's one of those big billboardy things that they always put their their little saying on. And it says, in Christ, we have perfect. And then they run out of space on that line. And it, the next line says, Eon, that is not our own. So in, they're trying to say, in Christ, we have perfection that is not our own. And literally the word perfection is cut off because they ran out of space. Oh, it's so imperfect. It's beautiful. I, I laughed for a while at that. I had to stop. <laughs> I laughed that Kelly, our protagonist's last name, is bogus. Her name <laughs> is bogus. And hey, let's be real here. This movie will be about Kelly's quest to get married. If your last name was bogus, you'd want to get married right the fuck away. <laughs> I was expecting at some point she was going to find out that you're just allowed to legally change your name and be like, oh, fuck, I don't need to get married. Oh, it's a DMV? DMV. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to... Walks out of the shot. And she's a 
Christian dance teacher, which if you're wondering what that looks like, it's like dance without any of the movement and <laughs> all of the terror. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Heath dancing. <laughs> yeah. At one point, she's like coaching these little girls because she teaches little girl dance and she's having them do bot months across the dance stage, right? And she goes, who loves Jesus? Go next. And there's one girl who doesn't go and she's my fucking hero. She is my fucking hero in this <laughs> montage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you just say bot months? Mm, what is that? Yes. Oh my. Kicks. It's fancy ballet kicks. Wow. Look at you. My extensive dance training shows up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Eli has a noises. giant post it note just to work that in somewhere <laughs> on a screen for sure. All phonetically spelled out. <laughs> <laughs> I crumple up my word of the day calendar from 1995. <laughs> all right. Now just to work in indefatigable and I'll be all <laughs> good to go. Name what did you one call other me? dancing term. <laughs> Hats. Hats. Got it. <laughs> but Kelly explains to us that she has been Christian since sophomore year of college. So a lesbian. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, basically she explains that, you know, she wanted to be loved and the church was like, I will pretend that's happening for 10% of your income. And she was like, fucking deal. Yeah. So now we cut over to her and the family geocaching. Now, what? I had to explain this plot point to Anna <laughs> like three quarters of the way through the movie. But this is very important. Ron and Carrot Top's mom are not Kelly's parents. They have adopted her like some kind of pet or handmaid or biblical they, terminology. They purchased her or they <laughs> annexed her. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's they own her now. Yeah. Yes. What is geocaching, by the way? Okay. Yes. I would like to point out my husband had to pause the movie to explain <laughs> this. Geocaching? Explain geocaching. Yes. And so I was like, well, maybe they have a point that women are stupid and need their husbands. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you can't fuck or talk about anything interesting, what's the only activity you can do? <laughs> Look for boxes in the middle of nowhere that people who also can't fuck or do anything interesting have put there. That's geocaching. What? Okay, so Ron finds a random toolbox like under a bridge here. So somebody else is an enthusiast of this thing and put that box there so that yeah. Ron could find it as an activity. Yes. Yeah, apparently this happens all over the world. All over the world to the extent that they have had to change how lampposts are designed because geocachers keep lifting up the bases of them and hiding little boxes of shit at the bottom. <laughs> but then those boxes of shit go bad or bump into something or blow up or something happens. So they have literally had so many people have so little things to do and go wandering into various coordinates on our planet that they have had to what? change the design of lampposts. Why would anybody want... Okay. It's not even interesting stuff in the box, though. So, like, <laughs> if there was maybe... It was like a treasure map inside the box, and then he would find treasure with a, just a series of steps and riddles. That I could see being something people do. It's just... Like, there's literally a bottle of bug repellent in the box, and that's it yes, when he is. opens it. Mm -hmm. And a list of... 30-year-old women that you can imprison in your home. Oh, you that's own. the treasure. Yeah. I get yeah, it now. That's the uh, withdrawn. Yeah. <laughs> but, but while we watch them geocache, Kelly explains the backstory here of the ownership. She was their babysitter, and then she got saved in the middle of college, which is very normal. And Ron, in a totally normal offer, was like, hey, <laughs> I'll be your Jesus dad. <laughs> And his wife, who is totally happy and full of joy, <laughs> agreed. She agreed. She agreed. And so now Kelly has moved in with them and has lived with them for seven years. Yes. What happened with Kelly's original parents? Like, we meet them later, but they don't even <laughs> mention them here. No, there was no consultation like, oh, you're going to annex our child, our yep. adult child for seven years. Yeah. Actually way more we're going to find out. I, I was okay. screaming that at the screen. I was like, where is her family? <laughs> <laughs> How great would it be if they were geocaching, they open up the box and like Kelly's original mom is in there. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> Preserved forever. <laughs> so now we're going to watch Ron screen one of Kelly's potential suitors. They meet at the 
outdoor seating section of a Dairy Queen. But I got to say, pretty sure that I'm her spirit dad is a strong enough screen for any of Kelly's suitors. <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. This guy is the same age as Ron. They're both like 60. Ron and this potential suitor of Kelly, who's 20 something now. 33. 33. She, oh, she's 33 now? Right. Yes. It's, it's been seven years right. since, she, since she got annexed at 26. Yes. But there's two old men meeting to talk about one of them trying to eventually marry and fuck her. It's terrifying. But y'all, look at Ron's face when he is on these dates oh, with he's these glowing. men. He is he's glowing. glowing. It is the, <laughs> it is the least least ugly <laughs> he looks like truly when he sits with them he like rubs his coffee cup he puts, <laughs> he puts his chin in his hand absolutely i thought it was some sick thing with her and i truly don't think it is no i think he's trying to date men through her he, he is he's succeeding is dating. at dating men through yeah. her <laughs> yes yeah. He's doing all those like creepy, you know, s signals like he's tilting his genitals yes! towards the guy and <laughs> playing with his hair. Leaning in. Yes. Oh, it's Ron's gay repression as the through line for this movie Ugh, is so sad. Four disappeared <laughs> levels of sad and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he interviews the guy. And again, just in case you're sitting there, podcast listener, and you're like, oh, I don't know if this is fun. These people seem sad. Ron's going to open with, so how do you feel about gay people? Are they people? <laughs> and the guy says yes. And Ron might as well push a buzzer. <laughs> oh, yeah. A trap door might as well fall out from under this guy when he says, <laughs> he doesn't even say, yes, I like gay people. I'm totally fine. Everybody should do whatever they want with their sexuality. He says, I... I guess I tolerate gay people as long as they never have sex. And Ron is like, that is way too liberal. Deal breaker. <laughs> yeah. Trap door. How dare you talk about the porn I watch? <laughs> <laughs> Not in my America. <laughs> now, at this point, if you're wondering, hey, Ron, how do you find men your age you want to interview to fuck your not daughter who they've never met? Don't worry. Ron's going to tell us they hang out and wait for a guy to show up. That's their uh, that's their game plan. <sighs> we also get a few more shots of their life here. Uh, we see one of the daughters playing with Tangled dolls dressed as Raggedy Andy. <laughs> Did you guys note this? No, I didn't notice that. <laughs> she was interesting looking. <laughs> kind of like a Chucky doll was a scarecrow at the same time. Oh, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting look. It's a weird look. We watch Kelly brush her teeth. Kelly has a Narnia poster on her wall as a 33-year-old woman. Yes, Kelly's bedroom looks like a 15-year-old's bedroom. It's really sad. It's very sad. She is so frozen in time. It's <laughs> creepy. So creepy. And we get a little interview with Carrot Top's mom here where she explains that if she was a young single Christian man, she'd fuck the shit out of Kelly. <laughs> I wrote my notes. I bet you would, lady. I bet you would. <laughs> if she doesn't annex a 26-year-old man at some point for the family so that she gets to date the potential suitor women, I don't know if that's probably not what Christianity allows, but that's what she, she's <laughs> but it lobbying should be. for. It should be. No, no, that's in the book of Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> this is also where we see the children's keepsake books. Do you guys remember this? Where they've drawn... Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Every girl has a <laughs> laminated binder full of drawings of their wedding when they're six years old. Question. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you have one of those. Oh, yeah. Is it a Civil War wedding? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, it wouldn't be any other way. <laughs> <laughs> Would you even marry somebody if they didn't wear a Confederate uniform <laughs> to your wedding? I would never big drag of a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is truly what Savannah, one of the daughters, is talking about. We look in her book. She wants a Confederate uniform themed wedding. So, again, if you were going to feel bad for this child, don't worry. <laughs> She's confirmed her racism to us. <laughs> and then 
they talk about their first kiss. Oh, God. And holy fucking shit, is this scene dark. Like, yeah. I don't want to say the last two episodes of this podcast should have been called Don't Worry, Eli, You're Doing a Great Job as a Father Because You Aren't This Movie. But the last two episodes <laughs> of this podcast have been called Don't Worry, Eli, You're Doing a Great Job as Your Father. <laughs> they, they get read this story from their mother about how, you know, your first kiss is a gift from God that you can only give to the right man. And then we cut directly from that to Kelly weeping as she describes that she gave away her first kiss. Okay, we have... What is this term gave away? <laughs> what is this? Do you normally charge? That's prostitution. <laughs> and is so much nicer than what's going on to Kelly. Oh my God. Honestly, this whole movie could have turned around for me if Kelly had just broken character and been like, they pay me 500 bucks a month to pretend to be this crazy girl who needs to live in their house and then they both fuck me while the kids are asleep. I would feel so much happier for Kelly. Wait, how much do they pay? 500 bucks a month in oh Grand Rapids, my. Michigan? That's good money. Whoa, you're not bogus. You're Bezos. Get out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you wanted to negotiate live on the air for Kelly. Kelly, reach out to us. We'll find a good sugar daddy deal for you for a nice older gentleman who will just have sex with you and won't make you read books about your first kiss. I promise. <laughs> Literally, the entire time Kelly was doing this interview where she talks about giving away her first kiss, my wife was next to me and she just kept yelling, Oh, Kelly. Oh, Kelly. <laughs> Look at my notes, gentlemen. I'm like, my heart rate is so high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so if that's got you wondering how Kelly's dating life went when she was dating, don't worry, Ron is now going to tell us about it. He's going to lie about it. Yeah. Ron is going to say, yeah, this kissing thing, it's a big problem for me and Don because both of us gave away our first kiss before we got <laughs> <Yeah>. married. <laughs> but he's clearly like, he's, he's basically saying like, yeah, I've had kiss sex with a woman before. I have. She's real. <laughs> is she? No. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah. He explains that he just doesn't want his children to have to live with, quote, the deep regret of that decision. <laughs> yeah, his regret is that it was a woman ever. <laughs> that <laughs> is for sure. And we're going to close this scene in the most terrifying possible way. Mom finishes the story for the little girls about the first kiss and how important it is. And then she turns to her children and goes, don't worry. We won't let a wolf or a lion come in, ellipses. And I wrote in my notes, and fuck you? <laughs> we won't let a wolf and or a lion come in and fuck you? Kiss you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Daddy and I will be guarding your gate was an actual <laughs> sentence, they said. Yes. <sighs> All right. A courtship. I don't, there's no segue to go to a break here. <laughs> We need We're to take a do break some though. ads. Yeah, We're taking I a need, break. I need a nap. Yeah, <laughs> break time. No segue. Where did they go? They said they just needed a bathroom break. Oh, Mrs. Vigil. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, hello, hello. Come on, what are you guys doing? Why, why are you dressed like that? Acorn TV. Hello, hello, hello. What's Acorn TV? Acorn TV is a streaming service that's rooted in British television. It has a rich catalog of exclusive, award-winning theories across genres, including mysteries, dramas, comedies, and so much more. Oh, I love British TV. It's so cozy. Hello, hello, hello. That's right, Heath. Cozy and the perfect thing to cuddle up with during the cold winter months. What's on it? Oh, so much. But if you're a fan of quirky British comedy, then the other one is a must watch. It follows two sisters from very different worlds who had no idea the other existed until their father drops dead. Hello, hello, hello. That's right, Heath. There's also Slings and Arrows, which is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Plus, you get thousands of hours of new, refreshing content on Acorn TV for a fraction of the cost. Compared to most streaming services, it's just $5.99 a month. Okay, but British TV? Do I have to download a weird pirate thing to watch it? Not at all. I watch it on my Apple TV using the Acorn TV app. 
Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, or you could do that. Escape hello. to Britain and beyond without leaving your seat. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use our promo code AWFUL. That's A-C-O-R-N dot TV code AWFUL. And get your first 30 days for free. Well, count me in, governor. Seriously, Rebecca? Wow, offensive. The British people are a very proud people. I hate you guys. You're canceled. Canceled. Cancel, governor. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tom Hansen. And I'm Beverly Hansen. And this is our squirrel daughter, Squeak Squook. <laughs> Squeak Squook has been with us for eight years now. Yeah, just about eight years. This is back when her name was Kara, actually. So she was crossing the road in front of her house and a garbage truck ran over her head and she just woke up as a squirrel. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people ask if we've ever considered getting her psychological help, but uh, no. No. We kind of just like having a squirrel. Yeah, yeah, it's fun, isn't it, Squeak Squook? <coughs> right? <coughs> right? <coughs> now, uh, why don't we all watch A Courtship, huh? You guys want to watch that documentary called A Courtship? <coughs> oh, Squeak Squook says no. She says those people freak her out. Yeah, that's fair, Squeak Squook. Yeah, I get that's it. That's fair. And we're back. And now we get a little title card that says Autumn on the screen, which sets up the movie to end on spring because they don't know how that metaphor <laughs> fucking works. I mean, but it's autumn. To be fair to the makers of this documentary, nothing happens in this movie except for the seasons. So <laughs> I, I am unwilling to be fair. To the makers of this. <laughs> but we learn that Kelly has met a young man. At a party, and they have been talking on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not what you think, though. They've been talking about saxophone maintenance, not <laughs> about any kind of flirting. We actually get a shot of one of the messages on Facebook from Ross. It says, I'm glad you're still practicing. You better believe I'm practicing the mouthpiece after that debacle. That has to be the most embarrassing thing I've ever done with a saxophone it was better tonight. So what are the other embarrassing things on that list that he's referring to <laughs> that he's done with the saxophone? It went up his ass. That's what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, knowing Ross yeah. as we're going to meet him. <laughs> yeah. Is that a doctor placed an x-ray chart <laughs> of his skeleton with a sax coming out of it? You see right here, the problem is you put a saxophone in your butt. <laughs> Up your ass. I'm not oh, a doctor. Wait, I am a doctor. That is the second most embarrassing thing <laughs> I have ever done. <laughs> but yeah, now that they're getting hot and heavy with the saxophone talk, Kelly needs Ron's permission to keep talking to him on Facebook. And this is where they introduce the idea that until Ron gives them permission to start officially courting, she just needs to think about him as a brother in the Lord. Rebecca, would you say I'm your yes. brother in the Lord? I would love that for us. <laughs> yeah, you're my brother until I'm allowed to fuck you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> See, Rebecca watches the same porn as you do, Heath. We're bonding here on the podcast. It's, it feels like every somehow there's... I don't like how there's a hook to that each time. <laughs> she keeps coming up. And and this is where the parents are explaining how boy crazy Kelly is over a shot of her putting on her nicest ponytail. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I like, I'm like the Lannisters, you know, it's like a beautiful, doesn't matter. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Kelly, ponytail. Kelly has a ponytail. So now we actually get to meet Ross, the uh, saxophonist. And if you're wondering what happened to all the extras from the movies we've watched from the 1950s, uh, they're Ross now. They all <laughs> came together and they are Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want everyone listening to just close your eyes. Think of the whitest man <laughs> and double it. <laughs> yep. Think of the Proud Boys JV squad and they've arrived at your house. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is Ross and his brother, Paul, who's like, I guess, here to guard Ross's penis along with <laughs> Ron and Don who are there to guard Kelly's kiss flower 
something. There are Eight. more penis and vagina guards in this movie than there are penises and vagina. <laughs> <laughs> there are, though. Yeah, his brother is a real broken wingman. <laughs> 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 and this is where we want... This was truly agonizing. Like, if there is this a hell... So and I go there. Awful. It is this dinner. You, you mean the fuck dinner? The fuck, the fuck dinner? The fuck dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the pausiest, darkest. Oh. I, I don't know how everyone, let alone anyone in this scene, managed to make it through this scene without murdering themselves. <laughs> if I was sitting in complete silence and someone said, quote, this is really good meat. I would just take my knife and slit my throat and hope that I was reincarnated as something that didn't have that conversation. Rebecca, do you want some candy corn? <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> I was about to uh, say. I, we can give each other candy corn. We'll cross our arms. No, sorry, I touched you. Do no. you always have a bowl of candy corn, Al? I, you, I like meat. <laughs> Oh, and, and look, I know you can edit things to make it awkward. I'm guessing they did not have to do that for this scene. No, I, I they edited out a lot of silence. Yeah, this <laughs> this was the cleanest version of this dinner. Yeah, this is also where we get our first shot of Ron's teeth. And I just want to say he has a baby tooth. Uh -huh. He has one runt tooth in his <laughs> mouth. And I'm going to think about it every day until I die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love that they had to cut the audio of Ross during this. <laughs> At one point, it was so bad. Like, he's supposed to be charming this family. And they couldn't have him say anything out loud because it was all like, meat is good. <laughs> so they did that once. And then they were like, I don't know. We're just going to have to do a montage. This <laughs> where we don't hear him actually talking. Everybody accidentally sits on their saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Ron knows what I'm talking about. This guy knows. <laughs> no. Ron definitely knows what Ross is talking about. Yes, he definitely. You know, does. candy corn is kind of shaped like a supposit. Yeah, what? You go. <laughs> this is also where we see the weird, unexplained scar on Ross's face that no one will ever talk about again. Yeah, yeah. Just him trying to suck his own dong, you know. <laughs> Saxophone got in the way. That's what the baby tooth is for, too. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of babies, now we're going to cut over to home church, right? Now, on my second viewing, I realized that this was a home church because when I watched this the first time, I wrote, this appears to be a baby convention. Yeah. Wow. I am so impressed at your work ethic that you watched this twice. <laughs> you didn't watch this twice. Oh, I watched it twice, Heath Enright. I watched it twice. Did you call me Teeth Enright? <laughs> I'm just adding a different syllable to the front of Heath for the rest of our careers. <laughs> yeah, Geith, it's cool. <laughs> Classic cheat. <laughs> so yeah, it, this is home church, which is like regular church, except everyone's preaching at each other simultaneously, <laughs> and there's no fucking limits on the crazy. And this is another one of those moments where like, it's that Nazi dynamic of everybody being like, yeah, we all... Uh, we're, we all agree with this thing that we all know we're lying about, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. And they all look the same to the point where they have like the same shaped glasses. <laughs> and and this, I had to look it up, was in 2015. 2015! That was not that long ago. And it seems like this was filmed in 1981. Yeah, no. It, this whole movie <laughs> feels like it was shot on a Nokia phone and you're watching it on a Nokia phone. It's very upsetting. <laughs> Ron owns a Nokia phone. We're going to see it later. Oh, yeah, we fucking are. Yes, he does. Actually, no, he owns a sidekick. Sidekick, yeah. baby. He has a sidekick with physical buttons <laughs> that he takes out in 2015 and shows us. Oh. <laughs> and the only reason I bring up this scene is there's one very important moment where the one smart girl in this home church figures out the hole in the system. So they're all talking about like, oh, don't give your kiss away. Don't give your kiss away. Protect your kiss. Protect your kiss. And smart girl's like, Wait, if I kiss someone, I can just fuck too, right? Because I already gave away my kiss. It's the same. And everyone has to do the Nazi hard stare where they're like, yes, it's the same. <laughs> and she's like, okay. And you can see everyone at the table being like, we did good. And that girl's just like, I'm going to kiss someone and then I'm going to fuck the shit out of them because I can just do it. <laughs> 
So now we're going to get Ron and his wife's gritty, dark backstory, <laughs> which is that their marriage fucking sucked because they were the people in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He says, our relationship was all about physical attraction. <laughs> we're, we're looking at these people. <laughs> and then they show us 80s photos of them. Which made it even worse. Worse. Somehow worse. I just kept screaming at the screen. Maybe you didn't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, no one screamed that to them in person because this is where Ron explains that they got an emotional divorce. <laughs> oh, God. This is this is nothing, by the way. If you're thinking like, oh, is this a Christian thing? No, this is just like a word that Ron and his fucking wife made up for like that time they hated each other a little more than usual. Yeah, yeah. That time he realized he wasn't attracted to women <laughs> and concocted a plan to date through <laughs> Kelly. What what he wished he was, which was a 27-year-old blonde woman. Yeah. So now we're going to watch Ron do the business of courtship because... There's nothing terrible in Christian that terrible Christians don't turn into fucking businesses. So this is where the movie explains that while Ron makes his living as a snowplow dispatcher, he has <laughs> selling women as a side business. He sends people, they pay him, and he sends people a don't kiss someone gift box. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is not a joke. No. That is not a joke. They just got no. a really big order is what we find yeah. out here. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> like a wholesale courtship order? What? <laughs> we, yeah. we watch the whole family packing up a copy of that weird fairy tale book and another shitty Christian book. And like, it's, it's Fo folding a 27 year old woman in half <laughs> and shoving Shove her into a box. <laughs> The, the Christian courtship's really taking a hit from Prime because they can get you a 27-year-old in two days and, you know, sometimes <laughs> the next day if you have Prime. It's, it's really upsetting. Ugh. And th this is also where we get another interview with Ron and his wife. And so much of this courtship stuff is just, men, you're not a loser, right? It's like, well, the, yes. the husband is the spear point. And because if I'm not the spear point, then I'm an asshole misogynist. So I'm the spear point and she's my helpmate. Yeah. And we had an emotional divorce and <laughs> I have magic powers. Beep, beep, circle, circle, dot, dot. I'm not gay. It's just. <laughs> I like men. Okay. <laughs> I, I just think that like all of it is so based out of this terror that women will expect them to be better. <laughs> you know what yes. I mean? <sighs> that it's just just keeping women from having any expectation of them whatsoever. It's insane. Yeah, it's a religion and a fucking business, an online business model based on like, honey, are you ever going to do anything with your life? Yeah, it's servitude. It's crazy. He talks about her being ready for marriage in ways of like, you know, uh, like he's selling a car. Like, <laughs> yeah. Transmission's all good. Cooks and cleans. What else do you want? He might as well slap the top of Kelly and be like, you can fit exactly. 10, 15 babies in here before she dies. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is where Rebecca's notes turn all caps for the rest <laughs> of the movie. I told you. I'm really trying to hold back. <laughs> so now Ron and his wife are going to sneak off into the garage in their minivan for a chat about Kelly's prospects with Ross. I don't understand this. I don't <laughs> understand what is happening. Oh, why are they getting in the van? I have no fucking That's idea. That's the conference table of their business. They have a real business <laughs> and it has a conference room, which is a Ford Aerostar from 1989. <laughs> Look, not to fat shame, okay? <laughs> But, but could there be a smaller container <laughs> for these two for humans? <laughs> yes. <laughs> their bellies are resting on one another in this mini. They have stacked their humanity <sighs> in order to have this meeting. Tetris logistics had to be applied to their humanhood <laughs> in order for this meeting to take place. Now, I will say, when he said, can we sneak off for a second? You guys thought they were going to go off and fuck, right? Yes, I did. Yes, I, I had 
n- there was no way these two people will or ever fuck or ever have fucked. No, I, I'll say I would. This movie would have won me back if the remaining 45 yeah. minutes had just been them raw dogging. <laughs> just grunty, <laughs> grand, rapid, steak filled fucking. Yes, I agree. I will admit they're they have they each have a version of a mullet, but like different shapes, but they complement. They're like yeah. two sides of a locket that fit together just <laughs> right. Oh my god, they're best friend haircuts. Oh. Yeah, I think- <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so what they decide during this conversation is that Ross has spoken to Ron. He would like to get to know Kelly better, but they're going to keep it a secret from Kelly. Why? Why? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Is this like the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? I don't understand what... No, no, no. They're going to keep it a secret until they're on the altar. (laughs) (laughs) Kelly, now that it's your wedding day, Ross does like you like you. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's he's already inside of you. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to cut over to the Richard and Helen Devo Center for Arts and Worship. Yep. And yes, it is that Devos or Devos, oh, whatever. Geez. Devos. Devos. Yes. Devos. This is Devos. This, the, the in-laws of Betsy Devos mm-hmm. own this. Yes. <laughs> and... Kelly is standing there with flowers because she she brought flowers for Ross on their first date. And he didn't bring anything. Nothing. Except herpes. Nope. Just I brought face. you a saxophone. Just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this terrifying moment. He comes and he greets the family and he's hugging everyone in the family. But of course, he doesn't hug Kelly because that would be improper. So we get a voiceover from Kelly being like, Oh, I'm such a fucking hug slut. I want to hug so fucking bad. (laughs) (laughs) They also have this terrifyingly sad moment where she's like, I bet people are going to talk about whether or not we're dating. Right? When they see us together at this Christian dance performance. Yeah, in this audience where everyone looks exactly like me. (laughs) We're going to stick out. Oh, yeah. And speaking of which, we're going to watch them date because truly nothing happens in this movie. So we we watch their date slash super spreader event. This is a (laughs) Christian nutcracker, which is going to start with a prayer because there is no too much that Christians will not protest. (laughs) Oh, my God. And then they're watching ballet while being filmed. Yes. Can you think of anything worse than that? It's the Seinfeld joke. We could we could watch yeah, we could watch somebody <laughs> filming them watch the ballet. <laughs> I think that would be more interesting actually. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. And then they talk. <laughs> they're talking. It's amazing. She is having to explain every moment of this ballet to Ross and Ron and it is fucking heartbreaking the mediocrity of these men no but what is happening here is junior high dating right ron is date is like trying to talk to kelly but also trying to talk to this guy (laughs) like it is like the craziest 14 year old horny like we can't do anything because we're not allowed terror Uh, yes in you know what I mean? Am I wrong? Yeah, no, oh. that's absolutely correct. And that's such an awkward situation. A lot of us have been there. It's extremely yes. awkward. But in this one, there's a camera inches from their face. Yes. Wow, yes. That's happening. And all and of them, they're all over 30. And they're all <laughs> grown adults. Ron is wearing jean shorts with pleats and a cell phone <laughs> holster just to fuck with me. The camera is so close to them. And my favorite, they're trying so hard not to look at the camera, but like yes. they're twitching to not inch their neck towards it. It's the best. <laughs> yes. Also, uh, one moment, I think maybe I'm just crazy. In the middle of the, what was it, the Nutcracker Suite the Nutcracker. ballet that we were watching? <laughs> yep. Oh my God. I'm, Does yes, dubstep music say. start yes. playing? There is a dubstep yes. section of this ballet. Okay. I thought I had a stroke and I was like, what? <laughs> I need to call an ambulance. It's done. It's done. What happened? Okay. That was real. You're mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, that was real. Why? Why, why did that happen? What? <laughs> I, again, 
anything would be more interesting than the movie we watched, but I desperately now want to watch a Christian Nutcracker with a dubstep section. Yeah, I think it's a, a choreographer who isn't Christian but got a job at a church. <laughs> and so she put one little in for herself. Yep, you know what I, I get mean? It. Sure. <laughs> I thought maybe it was just a prank by the editor of this movie who was like, you know what? I'm going to put in five seconds of dubstep and they can go fuck themselves. No one will notice. No <laughs> they can't stop me. <laughs> Only podcasters are watching this movie. And then we cut over to mom, Carrot Top's mom, being interviewed here. And mom's like, wow, that sexual tension was thick, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between your husband and Ross. Yeah, 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 totally. And now it is winter, which would seem to promise that this movie is almost over, but it's not. <laughs> We're going to go to Huntsville, Alabama, and it's time to meet Kelly's parents, her real parents. Her non-spirit family. Right, her yeah. non-spirit yes. family. This far into the movie, yeah. we're finally finding out. Yeah, and if you're wondering what kind of people give their 33-year-old daughter over to a guy named Ron for an 18th century courtship ritual, you're picturing Kelly's parents. <laughs> yup. Yes. So Okay, but this is the crazy part to me. This family, this Christian family in Huntsville, Alabama is the two liberal people they are. that they're going to shit on in this movie. Yeah. They weren't Christian enough. It's like you're on the subway and there's a homeless person ranting about the aliens inside his skin, but then another homeless person whose pants are on his head starts talking about the aliens underneath his eyeballs. <laughs> and then the documentary wants us to be like, man, that first guy is not really committing to the bit. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's it's like uh, the conspiracy theory people who have levels of it where there's like, <laughs> you know, there's the people who are like, yeah, oh, it's, you know, lizard aliens came down and they control the Illuminati and that's how it all works. And somebody's like, no, that's that's so stupid. That's ridiculous. But it is the Jews, though. Like it is definitely <laughs> yeah. the Jews. <laughs> totally. How do you get levels there? Yeah. But we do get some of the real backstory here, which I think is interesting, right? Yeah. Because through this conversation, we learned that Kelly's parents got divorced when she was young. No, when she was in college. <laughs> when she was in college. Get and, over which it. Which is young because she's an eight-year-old <laughs> as a 27-year-old, so. Yeah. <laughs> and she took that hard and decided that to avoid that divorce, she she would go with a Bronze Age marriage system instead. Ugh, God, suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I I knew at five years old love wasn't real. <laughs> you didn't try on any weird monastic <laughs> religions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was a monk from like eight to nine, but that was it. <laughs> yeah. So now we're gonna cut over to Ron, who is giving Ross a call. And I'm not making this up, podcast listener, <laughs> to see if the fact that Kelly has given away her first kiss is a deal breaker. And he basically says like, well, I mean, like, I'd prefer her not to. But like, if she's already a whore, then I guess, guess. that's fine. It's fine. I'm like spending time with her whore mouth, I guess. <laughs> fine. Meanwhile, I need to remind the listener, he has straight herpes on his <laughs> mouth really does. the whole you, movie you, you are being lectured by a man handed being handed actively handed azt throughout the film about your purity it's very <laughs> upsetting this is also where we cut back and again her religious family in the middle of alabama because the kids have all gone to bed so it's kelly's religious family in the middle of alabama are like hey um the thing you're doing and have been doing for seven years. That's fucking stupid, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was very surprised by this part of the movie. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I didn't, <laughs> they looked like people that wouldn't say how they feel. Right. So I thought it was just going to be this like, cause I didn't grow up in, a family, I, my family yelled at each other. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, uh, like for me, these like quiet families are louder than mine. <laughs> you know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. The unspoken things in this conversation are screamed at a volume that was yes. never matched in any of our households. A thousand percent. Yeah. Like I turned to my husband and was like, why is everybody yelling? <laughs> but, they're, but they're not. They're like hands are in their lap and okay, well, 
I don't agree. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's fucking crazy. Could you tell your Ugh. mother to pass the salt and shut her whore mouth? <laughs> exactly. It's like it's Will Ferrell the whole time. <laughs> exactly. And her stepdad at this point tries to like see if he can swap in as slave master in an attempt to make her life more normal. He's like, look, if you need someone to represent you like a fucking lawyer for your pussy. I'll be your pussy lawyer. Just <laughs> please stop living with adults we're not related to. And Kelly's like, no, no, no. But he does try to be like, you know, so what you're saying, Kelly, is <laughs> that you have an old sack of mayonnaise. <laughs> Go on a date with the guy you want to go on a date with first. That's yep. correct. Yep. 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 And so they have to date this old pedophile sack of mayonnaise. <laughs> okay. Before. You know what? Now I hear it. I, th- I, f- I think they're fucking. I think, <laughs> I think they are fucking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been so much better if Kelly had just stood up in the middle of the scene. Oh, Ron's fucking them. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get on Tinder and oh, do some weird stuff. I, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, it was the algorithm. Oh, God, I just got caught up in it. (laughs) And there's also this fantastic moment when she's talking to her mom. And look, they're both Christian, right? Kelly's just more Christian. So Kelly's mom is like, well, what if God's path for you is you finding and meeting guys for yourself? And Kelly's like, "Uh, trust me, God wants me to just wait and have Ron pick someone out. And her mom is like, it's not... What God told me, I expected her to pull out like a God hand puppet and be like, no, Kelly, get on (laughs) match.com. It's me, God. Yeah. And and, I mean, honestly, like full disclosure, this is when this movie got real upsetting. (laughs) (laughs) Because like Kelly is troubled, y'all. Oh, yeah. Kelly is hurting. Mm -hmm. And something. Thing, they don't talk about it in this movie. Something happened to her where she decided to shut off. It wasn't the divorce. She says y'all. it's the, but, something else. But Rebecca, happened. Rebecca, yeah. what if it was the divorce? <laughs> this is what will haunt me. What if Ke- what if we dig down and Kelly and there's no fucking crying game? She's just like, oh yeah, dad God. left and they signed some paperwork. So now we don't we can't. I can't oh, live. I can't live in a world where Kelly didn't get abducted by aliens and tattooed several times. Okay, maybe that's just like white people inbreeding it makes you weaker and weaker. That's a very, very valid theory. Reg- have, have regressive seen- genes is a great way to describe Kelly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Have you seen the Get Out or get, just Get Out? Is it called yeah. the yeah. Get Out? Or get out? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, Grandpa. It's called Get Out. It's called Get Out. It's called the Internet. The the Get Out. <laughs> This feels like that. A little bit. Like a Christian version of that. Like she is the body of a person who wasn't Christian and she had like a piece of brain implanted. Yep. I I totally agree. And like she has in this conversation with her mother where her mom's like, okay, so you're just going to sit and wait in a house and not talk to anyone, but hope to find a husband. Am I hearing you correctly? And then she's like, uh huh. <laughs> she has this like laugh. Oh, the laugh. That's so creepy. Her nose and starts just, bleeding. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's lobotomy. Like, it's crazy. The laugh is so terrifying because we, yes. we've all been around a person who laughs like that and yes. then change the subject immediately where you're like, <laughs> I mean, I would never go to a church and they're like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, anyways, sports, <laughs> movies, literally anything except you crying right now. <laughs> oh, but yeah, she explains to her mom that she is actively waiting. That's not passive. She's actively waiting for God to find her a husband. And then she talks about how she can't look into Ross's eyes because she might fall too deeply in love with him. I love I, mom is my favorite here. Her real mom. Mm-hmm. Yes. Who, agreed. A uses the like God has a plan thing against her and she gets really and Kelly gets really confused. She's like, yes. oh, so God has a plan. Do, doesn't that include me explaining how you're a fucking idiot? And <laughs> Kelly's like, oh, shit. No, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like God would have a plan for you to have a comeback right now. If that was, no, 
Nothing. <laughs> yeah, and then we're going to close this section with Kelly telling us that she wishes she could tell her family that she's dating someone, kind of, but she doesn't want her family to get hurt. Yeah, that is a straight lie. <laughs> that, is, that is a deflection, if I've ever heard one. Man. It's just the weirdest deflection, though. She's like, oh, I would. I mean, my mom did tell me that this is a stupid idea, and I could just say I'm dating someone, but. I don't want to get their hopes up about Ross, a guy they've never met. Yeah. <laughs> it's that Kelly wants to, again, like I said earlier, she wants to shut off. Yep. She doesn't want any risk at all. Oh, boy. Yeah. And the risk is Ron is going to eat you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're long overdue for another break. <laughs> but first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Is this movie technically a war crime against women? Yes, it is. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and call The Hague really quick, and then we'll be back for the big finale, also known as The Spring, <laughs> of a courtship. Gee, Billy, thanks so much for coming over. No problem, Mary. Gosh, you're fun to be around. Billy. Oh, um, hi. Hi, Mr. Swenson. Get in here, big guy. Come on. Hug it out. Come oh, here. Oh, we're going to hug. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, Ooh, we're God, still, that we're is good. Going with the hug. Oh, that is so good. You're, you're hurting me now. It's so, a lot. So it's a lot. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Uh, hey, Mary, shove over. Shove over. <laughs> Couch hog, am I right? Mr. Swenson. Oh, I know. I know. I'm just here to make sure you two have a good time according to the word of Jesus. So uh, what's the plan for the day, you two? Well... We were going to watch a movie. Great. Love a movie. Can't wait. Maybe take a walk in the park. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Walk in the park sounds grand. Just the three oh, of us. Oh, what? No, no. We were thinking it would just be us, Mr. Swenson. Just the, yeah, the two of us. Just us. Oh, sure. I I, I get it. Uh, crazy crowd. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks. thanks for understanding, Mr. Swenson. I'll fuck you in ways she's never even dreamed of, Billy. What? I said, no, don't get too silly. Hi, I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. Here to remind you, it's still not too late to get something special for the person you love on Valentine's Day. Or you could just explain that Valentine's Day is a corporate holiday created by greeting card companies to sell chocolate, and it's stupid. Yeah, sure, they'll love that. And there's no better place for you to shop for Valentine's Day stuff than adamandeve.com. I'm just saying, like, who likes that pressure? It's... Yeah, the no, worst. people hate showing each other they love each other. That That's not what I'm saying. I'm not okay. saying that so people don't So this year, Adam and Eve is giving you a ton of free stuff to ignite your Valentine's Day. And when you go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item, you'll get it at 50% off. That's amazing by itself. But here's where they load on the free stuff. I'm just saying it's like unspoken. The un it's the love When you enter our exclusive unspoken. code at checkout, Stupid. awful, not only do you Holiday. get 50% off the one item, you'll also get 10 tantalizing free items. First, for your viewing pleasure, six free movies. Pornographic movies. Oh, I do like porn. Yeah. Next, a free mystery pack that includes an item for both of you and something we know you'll both enjoy. Okay, I like items too. Nice. Yeah. Plus, free shipping. So don't be a Heath and right this Valentine's Day. Okay. Head over to adamandeve.com and be sure to use offer code AWFUL. Again, that's A-W-F-U-L, AWFUL. Because without it, there will be no free Valentine's stuff. That's awful at adamandeve.com. I don't, you, you shouldn't, it's, it's a, Dude, I feel you like gotta I, get Valentine's Day stuff. Jesus, you're still here? Yeah, man, the show's like two-thirds over. Oh, right. <sighs> Cotton. Cotton! Oh, okay. And we're back. And you're probably hoping that these very talented people get to show off some of their art, like maybe their saxophone or their dancing. Well, good news! <laughs> We open this scene on Kelly's voluntary incel dance class. That yes. She has. <laughs> Just giving away that dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is amazing because it's hip hop, right? But is they're it? not allowed to do anything remotely sexual. Well, yeah. the, the subtitle said the music was hip hop. So I'm going to assume <laughs> they intended hip hop. Okay. But. But they can't do any sexual dancing or anything that's hip hoppy. So it's just them like pointing their arms in various yeah. directions. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. Imagine giving out pamphlets was a dance. They're just like, <laughs> hey, yo, pamphlet. But one girl in this class who is my fucking favorite 
is sexing it up and Kelly is furious about oh, it. Absolutely. <laughs> Eye twitching every time this girl does a kick. It's the best. <laughs> What's that dance word for a fancy kick? Butt mall. Plump plump. Yep, that. Ooh, mm -hmm. Could be a, a petit <laughs> butt mall or a grand butt mall. Jeté. You never know. Plié. Something. How, 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 how. <laughs> exactly. We got it. We nailed Pas it. De nailed it. And then, as if a Christian hip hop class wasn't the most boring possible thing we could watch, we're now going to read their boring Christian chit chat text messages back and forth God. for so long. So long. I'm watching people text small talk to each other. It's my fucking nightmare. Yes. Small talk in full, complete sentences with punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking horrifying. Because look, I get chit-chatting back and forth. And I even get what the documentary makers were going for here, right? It's like, ooh, look, they're talking. Right. But then it's like, ooh, look, they're talking. Still still talking. <laughs> this has still to talking. be satire. <laughs> this, this has to be fake. This can't be real. No. And speaking of things that can't be real, now it's time for the home concert. And <laughs> I have a very important question. Do either of these people know how to play an instrument? Because it does not seem like they do. Absolutely not. No. no. Also, Ross plays the soprano sax because there is nothing about this dude that isn't the worst. No <laughs> thing about him <laughs> yeah. isn't the worst. This is also another terrifying interlude here. So we watch Kelly and Ross bonding for a little bit. And then the voiceover from mom is like, hey, one of the benefits of this is that Paul, who is 18, is really hitting it off with my 13-year-old child. Woof. Yep. I'm so angry. It's so horrifying. <laughs> and so as if to fuck with me some more, we got <laughs> we got the terrible music. We got literally watching small talk texting. Mm -hmm. And now they're playing with a giant sword and he's explaining his stupid sword to her. Yep. And then they're playing with an RC helicopter. Ron playing with the helicopter. The literally the helicopter that I had to work next to at a stupid fucking toy store for way too long. <laughs> okay. Wow. We need to talk about this scene because this is Ron and Ross's dating montage. Yes. And the voiceover is like Ron being like, oh man, it's so great to have a guy friend who I could just do guy stuff with. And then we watch Ron, who is 40, 50, <laughs> playing with a helicopter. <laughs> With so much joy, <laughs> on a, a joy I have never and will never feel. Inside. Inside. This, <laughs> we're not outside with this helicopter either. No. We're around a China hutch. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever watched someone shitty do the thing they're obviously meant to do on Earth? Right, like you got your shitty friend Ralph who's just like a big fat sack of shit and then he plays the piano and he lights up and becomes awake and alive and you see the human spirit in him. That's Ron playing with this shitty <laughs> helicopter flying it in a two-foot <laughs> circle around Ross. Yeah, he looks at the helicopter like he looks all the men that he goes <laughs> on a date with. God. <laughs> so now it's time for Tragedy to Strike. This is insane. <laughs> they, I can't, words fucking fail me. We've done 285 episodes. This is the 286th episode of this fucking podcast. I can't and believe words people fail listen me to that many. <laughs> to describe <laughs> how fucking stupid their breakup is. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ross, this all takes place on Facebook. Ross's friend dies. He gets shot in the chest by its little brother by accident, which is very funny. <laughs> but Ross, it's just, it's a very funny, it's a very funny peripheral image that they put into our head, right? It's not like a car crash. They're like, yeah, unfortunately, my friend was trying to skateboard underwater and he got eaten by a dick piranha. You're just like, ah, that really throws off the vibe. And, and Ross gets on Facebook and in his Facebook post, he says that his friend getting shot in the chest was part of God's plan. And Kelly's spiritual mom, Carrot Top's mom, isn't so sure about someone who believes that death could be a part of God's plan they think God allows evil, <laughs> but that it's not necessarily a part of his plan. God 
causing manslaughter by your little brother is different than God allowing it. It's literally the same thing if it's an omnipotent being. That's there's no difference. There's no distinction. There's nothing. This is like two people having a screaming fight over Pathfinder and 3.5. There's nothing. There's no <laughs> difference here. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what? Tough but fair. Right? God. <laughs> Tough but fair. <laughs> Tough but fair. Uh, also, by the way, I, I skipped a lot of the scene because I was just like, yep, okay, we're on Facebook and these are people on Facebook. I'm looking them up on Facebook. No, and don't do it. He, I, don't do it. Oh, don't tell them. I did. Don't do it. I found them. They're real. No. They're people on Facebook. Mm. Kelly. I found them too. Kelly Bogus is on Facebook. She's mostly selling a <laughs> star fruit guava energy drink that's clearly part of an MLM. No question I, about it. I even know what MLM it is. Oh, she do doesn't you? name it. Yeah, but she's very clearly for a specific MLM. Gross. Yeah. And Ron is selling all the crap in their house now with the hashtag downsizing for Jesus. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that includes a beer brewer, cooker, fryer, boiler, canner, seafood boil party device that he owns. <laughs> Oh my God, I want that. Uh, yeah, I, that, that one actually sounded kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest. His his latest post is February 1st of this year. February 1st, 2021. <gasps> it says, Kelly moved out this week after 17 <gasps> years. 17 <gasps> years, which Keith, we just have to admit, you did just spoil the movie. Kelly lives with these people <laughs> for 17 years and never meets anyone. 17 years until age 43. That's a prison sentence. Wait, that can't be right. No, it's, I could The movie this came on, out in 2015 and she was 33. But she had already been living with them for seven years when the movie came out. Right, but right, if she so, was 33 five years ago, or six years ago. Rebecca, oh, you've uncovered their lie. This is satire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Unless it was that they shot it like in 2010 and right. finally got it released in 2015. That would make it make sense. Damn it. Yeah. It's not satire. Yeah, it's possible. I'm sorry. Yeah. And by the way, I have some notes on Kelly's Facebook because I went deep, deep into oh Kelly's Facebook. Oh, my God. Facebook. You have to tell us. <laughs> but uh, I'm saving them for the end because okay. you can't you can't think about any other moment in this movie once you know the things about Kelly's Facebook that I will reveal at the end of our review. So, yeah. Oh, just just tell me now because I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think she lives now in the same town as Reason Con. Yes, yeah, she does. In North Carolina. She lives in Hickory, North Carolina. Yeah. We got to go visit her. We got next time. We got to get, we have to make Reason Con happen again. We got to talk to the Reason Con people, make them do it again, just so we can go, go bother Kelly. Yes. Get her. Maybe she could be a keynote. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> the point of all this is that Kelly disagrees with Ross's post about whether or not God allows bad things to happen or just watches them and does nothing as an omnipotent being. And so maybe they're not going to get together after all. We watch them email back and forth. Like and they're in the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the scene, wouldn't you know it, Ross starts ghosting her. Or perhaps wholly ghosting her, if you will. <laughs> no, he's just busy on 8chan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's getting ghosted here for believing in free will. Yep. Yeah. That's the argument. Mm -hmm. But also, she doesn't. She argued with her mother <laughs> that she yeah. doesn't believe in free will. She does not. She actively, passively waits for herself to have free will. It's right. very confusing. Very. But we watch this happen again. We watch a Facebook fight in a movie. We watched filming of watching somebody watch the Nutcracker Suite. We watched... <laughs> texting happen slowly. Now we watch a literal Facebook fight happen and they spend like conservatively five minutes. We watch them type at real speed into Facebook. <laughs> yep. And, and during this, there is the sound of dial up. Yep. <laughs> yes. They had is... dial up in 2016. <laughs> king, go king. <laughs> so now it's time for Ross to break the bad news to the 
real love of his life, Ron. Ron. (laughs) (laughs) He meets Ron in a diner. And I got to say, if this entire movie is worth it for one thing, it's worth it for when Ross shows up and Ron aggressively insists on a hug Um, before their conversation. And has to struggle to get out of the booth. (laughs) It's a really good hug. You give really great hugs. Has anybody ever told you that? People have made it out of escape rooms sometimes easier and more quickly (laughs) than Ron makes it out of this booth. (laughs) He was a fucking Houdini. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, he gets out of the booth. Ross breaks the bad news to Ron that Kelly doesn't believe in free will or does or whatever the fuck they're fighting about. (laughs) And so they're not going to date. And Ron's immediate response is, I really like you, Ross. I really like you and you and me can still fucking hang out, right? And yes, they can. Yeah, Ross is like, Sh- sure, man. We're we're still pals. Yeah. And he's like, oh, good, cool. I'll just let Kelly know that you're um you're breaking up with her and you won't marry her and you don't care about her first kiss or whatever. But I'm so glad I get to play with your helicopter, man. I was so afraid. <laughs> this is, I was so afraid I wasn't going to get to play with your helicopter again. By the way, also. Cradling his chin in his hand when he oh. looks at Ross, yeah. rubbing the handle of his coffee cup hard as a rock. Just sexually opening up 12 creamers for his one coffee that we get a shot of that he actually has. It's oh. gross. Yeah. This is the happy ending of the movie that the movie doesn't realize they created. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ron and Ross, happily ever after. Yep. <laughs> Little R and R, but we also see Kelly. It's so dark. We see Kelly responding to this news of like, "Oh man, I'm not determinist, or I am, and he's not, or whatever the fuck." And she's weeping again. But then she's like, "Oh wait, hold on. Maybe, maybe this is a trick. Maybe it's like they're they're setting up a big surprise party about how he really does <laughs> love me." Oh, that's so. Where she's like, but he said like. I know that we didn't waste any time, but like, why did we ever sit at the same table while holding instruments if we weren't going to get married? I have emails proving that free will is not a deal breaker. I I have emails. He loves me. We talked about meat together. (laughs) This can't mean anything. And by the way, this scene is concluded with Ron comforting her by going, don't worry, you can live here forever. And she does, turns out. (laughs) Yep. So now it's spring. Don't worry. There's no conclusion of this movie. It's just spring. (laughs) Mom tells us that Kelly's fine now. Kelly does not tell us she's fine now. No. no. And then we get the post credits to the movie. It goes dark. And the title credits tells us that Kelly has never met anyone living with Ron and Tarrant Top's mom. And it has been 10 years. 10 years. And this, my friends is when I looked up Kelly on Facebook Mm -hmm. and scrolled and scrolled until I found her posts about the release for the GoFundMe for this documentary. (gasps) What? Which she was hoping would be a fictional movie about a girl who meets her Prince Charming and gives away her first kiss but turned into a documentary about a lonely, unlovable piece of shit she is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She thought she was going to be an actress. In this movie. they made a documentary about her instead without her knowing it. And if you go back, here's the darkest thing. If you go back enough in her Facebook, you can watch her realize in real time on social media that it's actually a documentary about how lonely and terrible her life is. And then the very next post is, you should buy some of this kiwi starfruit antioxidant (laughs) fry bullshit. Wow. (sighs) And that, my friends, is the end of the movie. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Oh, all right. Uh, last thing before we wrap it up. What's the tagline for this movie? Documentary, fake movie documentary. Uh, a courtship, hopefully. <laughs> uh, help. My number yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> help. Do you not see me blinking in this supermarket? You Please. assholes. Yeah. Save me. Yeah. Saying the quiet part quieter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, 
That does it for our review of A Courtship. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we have another movie next week. It's pretty amazing. We just found out about this new release. Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath, as we record this podcast, the My Pillow guy, Mike Lindell, has released a two-hour documentary <laughs> that he said was going to be three hours long called Absolute Proof that is absolute proof of election fraud. And if ever we had a bat signal here on God Awful Movies, it's when Mike Lindell makes a documentary. So we'll be watching Absolute Proof. Also, I do have a spoiler. Mm -hmm. Really? He totally gives away his first kiss. What? <laughs> I thought you were going to say spoiler, Joe Biden wins the election. <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 286 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Rebecca for joining us again. And if anyone wants to hear more from you, where can they go? They can just go to my Instagram at who is Rebecca Vigil. Or if they want tickets to my show on February 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern, go to yourloveourmusical.com. Fantastic. Check it out. It's so good. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and then I'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Rebecca Vigil and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Breakfast. Ron and Ross lived happily ever after. <laughs> Starfruit and guava support the body's natural nitric oxide production. The little girl with the Civil War wedding was found January 6th at the Capitol. All right, are you ready with your squirrel noises? No! <laughs> this is so stressful. What, what do they sound like? <clears throat> They're like I don't, whatever squeaky, squeaky and like and shuffly. Squeaky and shuffly? That's in my head. That's what it is. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That's a fucking great squirrel. <laughs> I'm doing the squirrels from uh, Sword in the Stone. There Excellent. Go. Fantastic. Good, good choice, acting wise. Right. Thank you. It, you hear my dog? I can't, yes. Oh, wait. Stop, stop eating. <laughs> stop eating? <laughs> yeah, we can hear her chewing on the recording. What's Sorry. what's her name? Eloise. Nice. What kind of dog? Uh, she's half uh, cattle dog, half corgi. Oh, what? That's excellent. Yeah. So yeah, stupid she's... small legs. Love it. Yeah. The best. Yeah, and a giant tail. Why, why cotton is what we yell? It's a vine uh, from the early 2000s where this guy blows a big cloud of vape smoke and then goes, cotton! Topical. Cool. Thank you. Nobody is going to have any idea what that is. Like, seriously? <laughs> no. <laughs> cotton? Rebecca, have you heard I, of this thing? No, I've never heard no, of this. No, nobody's heard of this She's thing. lying because of how relevant it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's too relevant. I mean, I have a cotton tattoo, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> That's a different, different cotton. All right, you can stop there. A different there. vine. <laughs> it's related to a different defunct social media platform. Okay, yeah, that guy who never kissed anyone has mouth herpes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Analingus technically isn't kissing. Wait, okay, so, oh, I, did, I haven't read this one. Oh. oh, I thought you were going to push back on whether that counts as oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.